I always wanted to be a farmer when I was at school. I was always interested in working on farms and things like that. But my mother said, you know, really you need to get a trade of some sort behind you. Why don't you try butchering? And she came on one day, she said, I've been to see Mr. Street down at the co-op and he'd love to have a Saturday lad. And from the day I set foot in that door, I could tell this is what I wanted to do. Now, even now I can remember the smell of the sawdust, the smell of the meat, my nice bleached white smock and blue and striped apron. And the business started um, in 1903. So it was my great-grandfather who kicked this all off. So this is the original metric shop at JW Metric and Son. Jack took the business over from his uncle, who was called Judd Woolley, and he ran this shop as a bookies and a butchers. So he was known locally as the BB, the Bucky Butcher. And the abattoir was actually located just next door, which we actually converted into a flat. When we converted it, we even found the old railings of the abattoir in there. When I first started here, and I was 11 years old when I first started in the shop as a Saturday lad, which is a long time ago, but the old guy I used to work with used to tell me the stories of the of the abattoir and of the shop. Um, you know, so it, you know, it, it's this is this is our heritage. This is where it all started. We have been in here approximately six weeks. Uh, we been here since 1979. Uh, we've done our first redevelopment in 2012 and now that we've just redone our second redevelopment with more to come. I think like most people you fall into butchering. Uh, I started as a young lad, probably 12. It was an old fashioned thing where mum used to go shopping every day and I'd be tagging along and then uh, I lost my dad when I was about 13. And the butcher then give me a job, I think a little bit to, to give us a bit of income really, because obviously 1973 times were hard and, and I'd noticed as I was growing up, the street where we lived, there was only two people with cars. One of them was Kevin Kirkley, the butcher. And as a young lad, I'd watched my dad getting on his pedal bike to pedal into Manchester, who was a postman. And I kept thinking, these butchers, this, you know, there's this, so much going on here because they all seem to have a car. I think the first value-added product we ever did, I can remember Mike Winrow from Dial's Eels going back 30 odd years, coming in here very excited about a new Chinese dusting that they'd just got. And um, I think it was an MRC product and he couldn't wait to show me what this would do, transform a sheet of ribs into a value-added product. And uh, I can still remember now the excitement that we both had about this product. And we're still doing it now, 30 odd years on. My rep, Mark Bannister, I've known a long, long time. We've been buying stuff from Mark. He knows our business, which helps us as well, because he knows how we're set up and what, we're, what we push and what our ethos is. So he knows what to recommend for some of our best selling products. The sausages do make a really big part of our business. They, they become like from, I can remember years ago, they were basically something to get uh, meat used up. Now they've actually become like a premium, you know, um, gourmet product. Our value added area, uh, we get most of our sauces from DL. Uh, we make all our own burgers, sausages and stuff fries. Try and keep everything as traditional as possible, but moving it forward. And it is important that the customer sees the steaks that we're going to cut um, and, and, and sees the cuts of meat they're actually going to get rather than shrink wrap the carrier bag. If it wasn't for the team, we wouldn't be here. Uh, they're a fantastic bunch. Uh, some of them have been here for 20, 30 years and, and we wouldn't have a business if it wasn't for the team because they've got the same vision and passion that, that we've got. You've got to make sure that you're giving your customer something that they can't source from Tesco's and I think that's one of the places where Dell's Eels have really stepped in with their products, their sauces, marinades, things like that because they've really done all the donkey work for us. I think the supermarkets are looking to the meat industry, to the butchers shops that are still trading because they're thinking what are they doing that's so special, why have we not closed them down and that's simply because of the special sort of attention to detail that we're able to give to the meat. 
to be uh, a meat man, it's centuries old, isn't it? It's not something new. It's something that's been gone on for centuries, hasn't it? Somebody that's been able to do something with an animal that can be useful and productive and, uh, you know, not wasted. And uh, it's definitely an art form. And I'm proud to be part of it. I'm proud to be part of the whole industry. Well, the traceability is essential. It's really farmer, butcher, customer. So there's only three people involved in the food chain and we think that's, you know, that's a very strong message. I'm, I'm proud to be a butcher because I've done the best that I possibly can at it. I've tried very hard, I've put a lot of work in. I've tried to be the best butcher that I can be um, and, and make my family proud of, of what I've become. I'm proud to be a butcher uh, because I want to give our customers the best quality of products and the best quality of customer service. If it wasn't for my loyal customers, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have a business. Um, and it's important that we put back, so we, where possible we try and recruit local. Uh, we've got local connections with the local school, uh, the local business communities. Um, so it is important that you, you put back into the local community, because that's what Collins is all about. I honestly think there's never been a better time to be a butcher. If a young lad at 16 can go into a trade and 10 years later buy that business and then progress on, you know, a banker can't do that, but you can, you can in a butcher's shop. If you've got the ambition, you can take this industry, this job, right to the top. You know, and I think there's never been a better time to be a butcher.